All right, we are here with Tom Jordan. He is the President's Medal winner and the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. All right, Tom, first off, how good are we at predicting earthquakes now in 2014? We're actually not very good at all at predicting earthquakes, especially in the short term. I mean, what the public would like to see is for us to be able to say, okay, next week we're going to have a big earthquake and then, you know, get the heck out of town. And the crystal ball. We can't do that. Um, we do know a lot about where earthquakes might occur, mm -hmm. how big those earthquakes might be, and a lot about how frequently they occur. So that tells us something, mm -hmm. but it doesn't give us the information we need to predict them with high accuracy in the short term. So what are the biggest challenges to trying to predict earthquakes? Well, you know, the public needs information uh, to prepare for earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Engineers need information to be able to build structures that can survive earthquakes. So one of the most important things we can do is provide long-term forecasts for the type of seismic shaking and the other seismic effects that might result from large earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And that we can do reasonably well. We have long-term seismic forecasting models that say, okay, right here at the Convention Center in Vancouver, what type of shaking might I experience here in the next 50 years? Mm -hmm. And of course, that's exactly what you need to be able to design safe structures. So what are some of the limitations? What are the technological advances that perhaps may need to happen before we can be able to predict seismic events? Well, you know, in the past, people have tried to predict earthquakes sort of looking for a silver bullet. Mm -hmm. In other words, they would say, okay, there must be some signal that occurs right before a big earthquake that tells me there's going to be a big earthquake. Mm -hmm. And people have looked for 100 years for those signals, and we haven't found them. So there's another approach that we are taking, and that is, uh, rather than silver bullet approach, you might call it a brick by brick approach, where we are building up our understanding of the active fault systems that produce earthquakes, mm -hmm. and we are uh, getting as much information as we can and using that information to uh, understand earthquake recurrence. For example, we know that earthquakes cluster in space and time. If you have a big earthquake, you have lots of aftershocks. So if we have a big earthquake, we can predict that we're gonna have a lot of aftershocks. You can use the same kinds of statistics to forecast earthquakes in the short term all the time. And we are setting up systems that provide this sort of seismic weather report. Um, it is low probability information, meaning we can say during periods when the probability of an earthquake goes way up by maybe a factor of a thousand, and we can say the probability is a thousand times higher than normal. Right. But remember, earthquakes are very infrequent. So even a thousand times is not much. In other words, the absolute probability of having an earthquake is still small, maybe on the order of a few percent. So that's not quite what people want in terms of deterministic short-term prediction, but it does provide us with probabilities we can use to help prepare for earthquakes. And those systems, which we call operational earthquake forecasting systems, mm -hmm. are in the process of being deployed in the United States, uh, in other countries, New Zealand has a working system, uh, Italy and uh, Japan. Now you're here as a uh, GSA President's Medal Award winner. What does it mean to have your work recognized by the GSA? Oh, it's great. You know, I'm, I've always thought of myself as uh, a physicist who uh, does geology, uh, and it's really good to be with my geological colleagues here um, and celebrating such a nice event. I'm, I'm very honored. Well, it's good to have you here with us today. Thanks for coming. Thank you.